So we just want to welcome you here today to our move-in. Uh, my name is Gordon Oborski. I'm the Director of Advising at the College. And on behalf of everyone here at the College and our student success team, we want to welcome you here today. What we want to do in this time that we're with you is just introduce you to the, some of the people uh, involved with your son's education while they're here and the services that we offer. We really pride ourselves on offering extensive services to our students and working with them and the families to make sure that their educational journey here will be a success. So we're just going to kind of be turning it over to different people. Um, Nick Costanzo, one of our advisors, will just be working the, the web page there just to show you the different parts of the web. And you can access that at any time to really uh, recap some of the things we're just going to go over quickly today. So we'll start by, I'll introduce our college president to you. He'll give you his welcoming remarks, President Markle. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming in today. This is one of the very exciting days for us. Uh, I can tell you that when we get to commencement at the end of the year, the day afterward, we all sign this big sigh of relief, like they're gone. Thank <laughs> God. And then about a week later, we start missing everybody. And, and so this is exciting. Uh, we, as Barb said, we work real hard uh, to help your sons, in this case, grandsons, nieces, nephews, uh, whoever you have here with us, to be successful. Our goal is for everyone to achieve whatever their dream is, whether it is to go into a D1 program, to finish their degree, to go somewhere, to do something. Whatever that dream is, that's our goal, to help them achieve that. And I can tell you that we're going to work exceptionally hard. We're going to work hard on the football field in the next few weeks through camp and then through the season. We're going to work real hard in the classroom uh, because we know that that is the real key to their success. Uh, if we can't get them to that point where they're maintaining their academic eligibility, it doesn't do any good how well they do on the field. So we're going to keep them focused and we're going to work hard and hopefully uh, you'll be part of that process too. So if you get those phone calls and complaints that working a little hard, just dig right in and say, that's good, that's good, stick with the plan. Uh, we'll talk to you about the support services that are available. I can tell you again, we want nothing more than for them to be successful, but they've got to want it more than we do. We can't force them to learn, we can't force them to get up, we can't force them to go to practice. Uh, they've got to want it. Uh, and the fact that they're here with us, that they're part of this program, though, tells me that they can. There is no student that has come to us today or comes to us at any time that can't be successful. We know that. We work hard, as I said, and we provide the support services for them. And we try to do it with a smile on our face. So you'll see a lot of people here. You know, we had a great team. Uh, you saw a lot of them, including cheerleaders, veterans, uh, staff members of our team, coaches, uh, who are here to help move in today uh, and to transition. I can tell you that's a process that's repeated for all of our students. Uh, we really do like to feel like a big family here. Uh, and, and again, it's exciting. We're thrilled to be here. So I'm going to let people take, uh, take you through the rest of the information. If you have any questions for us, if you have any questions for me, I'll be here uh, at the end as well. Uh, just please grab me. And, and Happy to help. So, thanks again, and we'll see you down the path. Okay, I've seen a lot of you are already grabbing some of the information that we have at the back tables there. Everyone who's going to come up and talk to you today um, probably has some information at those tables about the different support and different programs that are available for their offices. So, as the program wraps, if you haven't already had a chance to get the information, please feel free to take whatever you need. Uh, your sons will be getting that same information when they're in their classes, but feel free to take it. It never hurts for somebody else to be reading it. So now we will turn over to our Director of Athletics, Joya Whittington, who's going to introduce some of her staff. I'm not going to use the mic. Can you all hear me? I coach too, so I definitely don't need a mic. Um, I just want to bring Mr. Barona. I'm going to bring him up in a second. That's Mr. Barona in the black shirt. He's the academic advisor for the football team. He's a key piece to this puzzle, okay? So it's good for you guys to see his face. 
And in the back, that's my assistant athletic director. That's Eric Larson. He started like 12 days ago. So I got him like little circled around campus. Um, I'm going to give you guys two important things I want to talk to you about. One is our culture and who we are and why we exist. And two, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some statistics. Everybody loves statistics. Your sons, wh whoever you brought here today, relatives, nephews, whatever it is, they love stats, right? So a big thing with stats, last year we were 11 and up. Okay, last year we won a bowl game. Last year we had a coach of the year. We had NJCAA All-Americans, players of the year on both sides of the field. Okay, those are great stats. We could go back for years and I'd be here forever if I did. But last year was a huge year for us. But I want to tell you the important facts. 32 NJCAA academic All-Americans. Okay, of 122 players, right? For the past three years that I've been here, this program has graduated their players with a 3.0 cumulative average. Okay, so that means everybody, right? That's not just our starters, that's not just our top players, that's 122 players. Our cum average is right around 3.0 or above. Those are the important stats. Okay, Mr. Barone is going to talk to you about our academic structure, right? From a cultural perspective, academics are first. Everybody you just talked to, that's the reason why we're here, okay? Discipline is next. It's going to get really tough for them. That's good. Just like President Volk said, when they call and they're like, Mom, Dad, Uncle, friend, I don't know if I can do this. We need you on the other line to say, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because if you don't, and you co-sign with the complaints, not, they're not getting any better. They're not going to get out of here. They're not going to graduate. They're not going to get to that Division One level. 2% of NCAA athletes, 2%, okay, actually make it to the NFL. 2%. So their work ethic, the culture here, it's uncommon. It can't be normal. It can't be like every other school. And there has to be a sacrifice piece to this as well, right? They got to sacrifice their social lives. And I know it's driving you guys crazy, man. Everywhere we turn, it's that phone, it's that phone, it's that phone. It's that social life. They're going to quickly realize as we get into the rest of this week, they're going to have to sacrifice that social life if they want a chance to be in that 2% or better or to get to that NCAA level. And that's what our culture is all about. Academics, discipline, and sacrifice. And they're going to hear it over and over and over and over again. And some of them are going to get it. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure most or all of them get it. Okay? But we're very real. We're not going to be perfect. We're definitely going to make mistakes. Okay? We're human beings. Our staff's going to make mistakes. Our coaching staff's going to make mistakes. But we are very authentic. And we'll own up to that. And we're going to do everything we can to put our student athletes first. So I want to be a resource to you guys. My office is in the student union. If you need anything, feel free to shoot me an email, anything you need to do. Coaches know how to get to me. They're obviously going to be your front line. And everybody that you talked to today, this is the team that you hopefully are going to see in two years as I cross that stage. We're really excited. I think, like, was this the first time we ever did a football parent session? Sort of. So this is amazing. The support in this room is key for us as well. We can't do it alone. All right, so just thank you guys for coming here today. And just every, everybody that you talk to is key. Everybody's a piece. It's huge. There are huge pieces of this puzzle. So just listen. Any questions you have, fire away. Have a great day. Have a safe trip home. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Rick Barone, B-A-R-O-N-E. I'm the academic advisor for every one of your sons. Thank you for trusting your sons with Lackawanna College. And I can tell you that after doing this for a period of maybe about seven or eight years now, the successes that we have in the classroom, that determines where your sons go in the future. When Joy has said 2%, I look at it that 100% graduate with an associate's degree and make a life for themselves. That's my goal. I will counsel them socially, academically. I will let them vent to me when they're frustrated. And I have a tremendous amount of patience. At 5 o'clock today, the echo in this room is terrible, by the way. <laughs> At 5 o'clock today, I'm going to meet with all of them. Here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to tell them about college. We're going to have a wonderful conversation. There's not going to be one negative that comes out of my mouth. Because I always look at the glass half filled. They're all going to have my telephone number. I tell them my phone goes on at 6 a.m. and it ends when the Yankee game is over. <laughs> and I shut it off. I'm a diehard Yankee fan. And what's ever happening now in Boston, if you love the Yanks, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> so my goal will be to make them feel comfortable. And I guarantee it's always been this way. By the end of September, the beginning of October, with my consistency every day, they start to know that I'm not a BSer. And they know I really do care about them. And it takes about a month. By being consistent, I'll go into classrooms. Not to observe a new teacher, but I'll sit, fence, sit down and I'll walk up to somebody, how are you doing today? What Lackawanna College has done, here's what they've done. They have put the coaches in the right spot. Great coaching staff. No, this is not any particular order. The faculty is very, very easy to get along with. All of our offices that we have, financial aid, business, student support, it's a place that cares about kids. So you can go to a big time school with 150,000 people, they won't know who your son is. We'll know. We take the time to get to know them. They hired me, an old guy. Not that old. I don't look that old, right? Anyway, as an academic, the last piece was, let's get our boys from, from the football program to where they need to be, where, wherever it is. Let's have them graduate. So we did. They put, everything is in place for your son to make it. There's only one thing that will prevent them from making it. And I'm going to be very honest with you. If they take home and they bring their home life here, can't happen. They have to go through a process of maturing, accountability, understanding what's important and why. They have to understand the difference in the vocabulary, whether they're on tile or wood or whether they're on turf or grass. I'll help them through that. I will do everything I can to have them be successful. And I'm proud to say that we are successful. We have done things that your sons are going to be much better leaving than they were when they came in. And you have to trust, trust us. At 5 o'clock when I give every one of your sons my phone number, if you sign the FERPA where I can speak with you and let you know how your son is doing, if you want to call me, have your son give the number, you call me, and I'll give the best uh, summary as I possibly can. Because you need to know. If you don't need to know, that's fine too. But trust me to help them. It's going to be a process. Believe me when I tell you, it's not going to be easy. But they'll do it. Do you have any questions? I don't want to get into specifics on academics now and credits because I don't want to overwhelm you with, the, with, with that stuff. But I'll, we take care of it. The student affairs, myself, we know what credits, what, who's in developmental, who's in bridge courses, and all the, all the stuff that can help them succeed. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Barone? And parents call me Rick. Students call me Mr. Barone. We're good? You look good. Okay. Yes? Can you uh, sign up for the first uh, on the student portal? Yes. Us to get into we'll the talk portal. about that in a few minutes. Yeah, okay. that, that's not my area, but a good question. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. It's a perfect segue. It's a perfect segue. So Mr. Barone is done. God bless you. Have a safe trip home.
apologize for those of you down at that end who may not be able to, to view that, but we're, what he's going to be doing throughout the presentation today is just sharing the information that is right on the home screen on our web page, our www.lackawanna.edu, and it's the parent page. And as we're going to continue through the program today, we'll just be referencing different areas, so when you do have that chance, if you really can't view it today, just feel free to go in there and, and see whatever, uh, it'll kind of update you with everything we talked about today. So as someone asked about the FERPA and the regulations, we figured our next speaker then should be the person who's responsible for that. So I'm introducing our registrar, Teresa Scopoletti. All right. Hi. Um, I wasn't born to use the microphone, but there was quite a bit of an echo, so hopefully um, this is better. My office, just so everybody knows, is the keeper of the academic record. So everything in your student file, I mean, in your son's, or son's file ends up in our office. Everything from their very first admissions application to their very final graduation application. So I, I will be going into the college 101s and uh, talk, talking to your sons about um, all of the services in our office. But for, for today, probably the most important thing that we need to talk about is with what Mr. Brown referenced, the FERPA guidelines. So just so you know, it, it, it's equivalent to the HIPAA in the health healthcare world, so we cannot talk to any parent or guardian at all about your son's progress, whether it be academic or financial or anything like that, unless um, the student signs off on the, it's, it's called a third party agreement. Um, if they allow us to do that, then we can speak to you. And it's a very easy process, and I love the instructions over there for you to share. Um, with your son, but they have to sign off on it. So just so you know, you can sign all you want and it, it won't do you any good. They have to go into the portal, sign off and say, yes, um, I give permission for you to speak to my, my mom, my dad, my guardian, my spouse, whoever it is, um, and then it'll come, you'll get an email that will come directly to me, I'll put the approval through, and then um, you'll be able to see whatever they allow you to see. They can sign off if, if they only want you to see their academics, so you can see their transcript, you know, their grades, or they can sign off to, for you to see their finances, their bills. When I have two children in um, college, and as soon as they have the first question about financial aid, they sign on that dotted line, and then I was, I was good to go. So, um, again, but they have to do that, and the instructions are there. Um, a couple other key points, we um, will verify enrollment, so if anybody needs verification that your son is a full-time student, um, to stay on insurance, sometimes it's for health care, there's lots of other reasons why you, you know, they may need verification of that. That comes through our office also, so they can come in and do that for her. Again, they can get everything right off um, the website. And then the last piece that I want to talk to you about is graduation. We have one ceremony in May, but we have a lot of students that finish up in August and a lot of students that finish up in December, um, and then of course the traditional May graduates. Um, you know, we do confer them, and if somebody finishes in, in the fall, we'll send you the diploma and the graduation date will be on there. But just so you'll know, there is only one graduation ceremony in May. And the last piece is um, that you're, you're, we notify every student as soon as they apply for graduation, if there's a problem, if they're going to be in class short, if there's any issues, we, we send them an email, we send them a letter, and we reach out and say, please get in touch with our office. And, and if they do that, nine times out of ten we can get something fixed right away and we can get them in that class that they may need. But if for some reason we do allow them to walk one class short in, in the ceremony, then a lot of students may just come up that one class short, finish in the summer. So we allow them to walk in the May ceremony so that they don't have to come back next year. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is your son will know if he is short. So. Um, if we allow them to walk, and even though they walk across that stage and um, shake President Bolt's hand, if they know that they're one class short, they are well aware of that. So um, hopefully, you know, that, that won't be the case. We get everybody in the class that they need, and they'll be good uh, by the time they graduate. But again, they will know that. So does anybody have any questions for me? No? Okay, um, we're down to Suite 111. We'll be down there for a little bit this afternoon, and you can share that with um, your son. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get into some of the other services. So with, I'd like to introduce now our Director of Public Safety, Gary Schoner. Well, 
afternoon. Nice to see some of you again. I bumped into you earlier when your son did not get their ID. I'll make my presentation hopefully informative, but most importantly, brief. Right. Security at Lackawanna College. Your dormitory that your sons are moving into have spike protection. They have stabbing almost 24 7. We have a uniform officer sitting at the front desk from 3 p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning to make sure that people who belong to the building are in the building. There's three RAs, resident advisors, who are living in that building. And we have security officers, some of them you met today. The uniform police officers, we're here 24 7. We control the campuses, we walk through the buildings. So we have a very tight knit organization. We have a pretty good reputation with the students. Most of the students find our offices approachable. Uh, some of the offices have already made some friends with their sons. So we hope that we can grow with time. Also, we have a working relationship with the city of Scranton. The police department, the public works department, all the other services they have. We also work with the local hospitals and social services. So we have a lot of services both in-house, we have all of my co-workers here, and a lot of services surrounding the building. Again, we are in an inner city location, so we have to have some other concerns. We have a lot of closed circuit TV. We have a lot of work with the other agencies. What we don't have a lot of is parking. Nobody put it in the background. We cannot offer your students a vehicle parking spot. Mm -hmm. Now, you've heard the fact that you've got your son is going to be very busy. He will not need a vehicle. We do have arrangements. If he needs to go to Walmart to pick up some items he forgot, we do have a system in place where he can sign up and we'll get him to Walmart, get a bag on campus. We'll have a walking tour later on this afternoon to walk downtown during the services that are in town. Getting back to parking, we have reached out to all the local commercial parking lots. The information is on the desk over there. It is an extra fee. Uh, we always, always look around to make sure that we can find extra parking. And uh, we have grown with our parking, but so is our population. So right now, no resident student will be able to park in college property. As you take a look over there, you'll find a small booklet that we hand out to your sons. It has our telephone number on the back. It has some ideas on how to be safe in a alley setting. Please, you know, pick up one for yourself if you want to read it. One last thing, I'll be up on the weighing system. Your son will have an opportunity to sign up for a free texting system. If there's an emergency on campus, if it snows in Great Northeast. Do people from Virginia? You do get snow. They sign up for this, they put their mobile telephone number in, they put their email, they'll get notified of any closings, any weather problems, any type of event that's happening on campus that might affect the state. If you move up a little bit further, uh, again, these are all the things that we do for the dollars, but we also have a working relationship with the other university. And we put out on this tiny morning. If something happens on a nearby campus or on our campus, we share that information both in our house and to the local community. So we have a medical college behind us, we have the University of Scranton up the street, we have Maryland University, we have Johnson College, we have a lot of other educational institutes in our area. We have a working relationship with all of them. Thank you. Oh, we also have an anonymous reporting system. If somebody sees something, you want to hear about it, but everybody's well being. It's anonymous, you can report to us and go investigate. They can tell us the name if they want to, and you keep it. How many privileged friends see something, say something? We're trying to get that information to go both ways. And you push the up to the top, you put the phone in with it. There's all the information that you see about the technical closing. We'll go over all this information with your sons. 
that you care, that people you care about. Any questions for me about the public safety side? So I want to invoke you all the time today. I want to thank you for trusting us with your son, the most valuable profession. Um, not a piece? I know some of you have a long way to travel. Some of you not so far. So, well, thank you for your time.
loves you, Joe, we're here to help. And we're pretty good at what we do. So if you don't want to do that FAFSA alone, by all means, let them come into our computer lab. Um, and, and the coaches will notify them. We do offense one day, defense another. Then we go back and we do the offense that we missed, and then again the defense that we missed. It takes a couple of days, but we're more than willing to help them. And we'll make sure we get it right. All we ask from you is to be available. Username and password and tax information. We need that over the phone. Okay? Okay. So any questions? Any concerns? Issues? No, we're all good. All right. Well, thank you for coming today. And I appreciate your time.
those up. We'll give you all the information that I'm going to review with you today. As well, I will be in all the college one-on-one -on -one classes with the incoming freshmen, sharing a greater depth and detail about the services and supports we have for student wellness. Our mission of student wellness is to engage, educate, and empower our students. Our goal is to promote their overall wellness for their personal effectiveness, as well as the wellness of the collective college community. We like to uh, engage students. We want them to explore the attitudes, the skills, and the resources that they need, not only to succeed in the classroom, but also to succeed in life for their own personal growth and wellness. We like to educate them on healthy lifestyle choices. So we talk about things like prevention of drug and alcohol use and abuse, mental health issues, and prevention for sexual misconduct. And we empower them to enhance their wellness in a variety of areas. So we look at wellness in areas such as social wellness, emotional wellness, spiritual wellness, um, uh, financial wellness, and intellectual wellness. Student wellness is designed to address issues of adjustment to the college experience. So these are some typical issues, but it's not an exhaustive list. Um, so some of them that we see are students are homesick. We see that a lot in the beginning, and we can help them to overcome some of those feelings of homesickness. Just even adjusting to living with their roommate, to getting along with others, to the transition from high school to college, because there's a lot of different demands. Time management, financial stressors, substance use, homelessness, social pressures, um, anything that will come up for them that will affect their personal growth and their effective um, success here at the college, we can help them. I tell them when they don't know where to go to help, just come to Student Wellness. We're connected with a lot of resources within the college as well as the local community to help them. We offer support assessment referral services for all of our students. So if students have difficulty, they can come to us as much as they like, once, twice, all semester, weekly. We're there to help and we will support them to overcome those difficulties and if they need services outside of the college, we will connect them to those services. So we will not just say, here's a phone number, you need some mental health, substance abuse services, victim services. We will make that phone call for them. We will facilitate that referral. We will help them in their journey. So if they're receiving services outside of the college, we will check in with them to make sure that they're not having those services or sessions done. And we will make sure that they're doing well and everything's going well today. Our limits of confidentiality, it is free, it is confidential for students. There are a couple things that we cannot keep confidential, such as if they have thoughts of harming themselves, somebody else, there's elder abuse or child abuse, or there's a court order for us to speak on that student's behalf. Those are, those are the circumstances that we cannot keep confidential. Other than that, for us to talk with coaches, advisors, um, other staff, faculty, or even to talk with you, we would need their permission. So how do we know, how do your student know if they need student wellness services? I always ask students to look at how their, their current skills that they're using to cope with that difficulty are working for them. So if they're not working really well, maybe we just need to give them other tools in their toolbox to utilize. I always say the only tool we have is a camera, we're going to use the camera, right? So I like to teach students other ways and other skills that they can handle and manage conflict or problems. And I also tell students, look at their daily functioning. If they're not successfully functioning throughout their day, such as if they're not getting to class on time, they're not getting their work done, they're losing their concentration, they're having difficulty eating healthy or sleeping in appropriate amount of time, they're lashing out, having difficulty in their relationships, they come to student wellness. They might not know what's going on for them, they might just feel a little off, but it's our job to help them to figure out what's going on and to overcome those difficulties. We do do drug and alcohol assessments and group education for students who have issues with drug and alcohol. We also have free anonymous online screenings on our portal page so students can go on and do mental health screenings and then that would give them immediate feedback should they have any um, more serious concerns regarding mental health issues and it would also give them resources that they can utilize. And we do do life skill building groups during our free period on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, students have about a 45 15 minute free period where they can go to clubs or attend some workshops and groups and we will do workshops on life skill building. So things like um, you know, managing your emotions, building healthy relationships, goal setting. How does Lack of Law do the participation? Very favorably. So if students share, if students share it with anybody at Lack of Law that has student wellness, they're going to say that's great. That's a sign of strength, not weakness. So, you know, we encourage as a collective college community students to utilize the supportive services. And um, I think a lot of students get fearful that if they come to student wellness that that information is going to go on their transcript.
next trip or follow them in some way because life happened, or they had an obstacle or a difficulty, then that's not the case at all. It is free, it is confidential, and we do encourage students to use the service as much as, as they need to. We do have an educational web-based platform on our portal page, so students can make a referral, they can call, they can text, they can stop in our office, they can go on the portal and make a referral requesting services for student wellness. And then our educational platform on the portal, all those wellness areas I mentioned in the beginning, there's fabulous resources, interactive videos, assessments, all kinds of great things that your student can look on the portal and get all that wellness information, even on their own. So the other part of my position here is Title IX coordinator, and Title IX is a federal civil rights law that prohibits discrimination based on sex in any federally financed institution. So this includes um, sexual misconduct such as sexual harassment, sexual assault, stalking, dating violence, interpersonal violence, and gender-based violence. So my job as Title IX coordinator is to address those issues immediately, remedy its effects, and prevent its reoccurrence. So some of my responsibilities are receiving and investigating promptly and effectively all those reports of sexual misconduct, training and educating our staff, faculty, and students on Title IX issues, reporting all those instances according to our mandated reporting policies, and maintaining the confidential records for those. We also have, as Dr. Our Director Schoner had said, the TIPS report incident, so right on the portal page, students, if they know something, hear something, um, we want them to say something and do something. So they can go right on the portal page and report anonymously any instances of sexual misconduct. So we're essentially here Monday through Friday, 8 till uh, 5. I have a student wellness program coordinator that works with students as well. That person is in suite 105. I am in 102. They can call, stop in, email, schedule online. I am 24 7 as well at the college for any kind of emergency mental health consultations for students so that we can get them safe and get them the help they need should it be any time after hours. And again, our brochures are in the back, so please you know, feel free to take a brochure. If you have questions, I will be here afterwards to answer or talk with anyone who might have any questions or concerns, um, as well as contact me at any time. But this is a lot of information, and you might leave today and then think, you know, I really want to know, to know more about this area of wellness. I'm available to, to answer any questions. Do you have any questions now that I can help with? Okay, thank you for your attention and your time today. Okay, we are the, oh, almost at the end here. What we're going to talk to you a little bit about today are the other student support services. So within the Student Success Department, we have academic advising, our transfer services, academic coaching, our tutorial services, our writing center. There's a lot of help available. The most important thing is students have to ask for it. We can't help someone if they don't come to us for the help. So the first thing we talk about that is most important to them to make sure that students can graduate is our advising program. We have a very strong advising program. Nick is an advisor um, in the center with, along with me. You heard from Rick Perron, where Rick said that he is that academic advisor. We kind of refer to Rick as the frontline advisor. He's out there day to day, checking, making sure, how's it going today? Did you get to class? You didn't get to class. What's going on? Are you having a problem in class? For the registration piece and making sure that the students are taking the courses that they need each semester, that falls to me and Mrs. Duda, Denise Duda. She is not just the coach's wife. Okay? He may tell you that, but he's my husband. Right, exactly. Exactly. When it comes to the academic piece, it's definitely that's the lady that we need. But Mrs. Duda and I pretty much handle all of the registrations for the football students. And we will meet with them in groups, just as Ann Kewick said with financial aid. We do the same when we're getting ready to register. We'll bring them in offense, defense, anyone we missed. Um, there, any balance that they have has to be paid in full before, or has to, arrangements have to be made before we can schedule a registration for the next semester. But we will ensure that they're in the classes that they need for the, the next semester and then keep them on track for graduation. Um, as, as someone, as Teresa mentioned in the registrar's office, sometimes a student falls behind a course, you know, things happen, they end up needing to withdraw from a class or they need some of that additional work. So we will definitely be working with your son early on to make sure that they're aware they might need a summer class. 
we may be suggesting 18 credits in a semester, but again, our goal is to make sure that they can complete their degree in that timely fashion to then move them on to the next step. We do have transfer agreements with many, many schools. That's another piece of what we do in the Student Success Center. Um, very often when it comes to transfer for athletes, though, that's handled usually more by the coach, the coaching staff. But I mean, we certainly are available to answer general transfer questions as far as how well uh, courses do transfer. Our credits, if you're again checking between here and the college website, credits transfer everywhere. Um, we very, very seldom see anything transfer unless it's a D. A D usually will not transfer to another school. But grades of C or higher will always transfer. So transferability is, is key. Mrs. Duda is really on top of that. Um, she knows the best courses for transferability. And we have built a program to make sure that the courses that the students are taking are designed for transfer. So we definitely have that piece of it taken care of. The other um, really important piece of student success that we offer for our students are the other, is the other side of the academic support, our coaching and our tutoring services. I'm going to let Mrs. Duda tell you about some of that quickly. I'm not great with microphones. I, I just like to yell. You know, I was a coach at one time also, so that's why I, uh, I can project it very far. But um, for you guys that did not hear Mrs. Norworski, my name is Denise Duda, and my title is Student Success and Tutor and Coordinator. Part of my responsibility is one of the FALC academic advisors. But more importantly is the student success side. What if your son is having difficulties within a class? All our tutoring is free, but if they need to reach out to us and do it immediately. There's so many of those students who come into my office maybe three weeks before a semester ends and says, I'm failing math. It's a little bit too late. So if you hear that, and you hear that um, your son is struggling in any subject, please have them come to the Student Success Center. We're down in room 105, and that is free. Don't let them tell you they need money for tutoring. I've had that. A parent call me up and say, how much is that tutoring again per hour? And I said, no, it's free. And they go, oh boy, let me call my son. Because they're trying to get a little extra money, but it is all free, all our services. We also have an, an, an office right next to me is an academic success coach. She helps with those soft skills such as time management, organizational skills. And that's, that's all, also free of charge. Um, tomorrow, and if you haven't already known, all incoming freshmen will be taking a College 101 class that starts tomorrow at 8.30. And we'll talk to them about that later today in another session. I oversee that program also in the College 101 classes. They are not allowed to miss any of those classes for the next two weeks. So please let them know that if you want to make that extra phone call in the morning. I know they have to be up for breakfast. Do you guys have any questions about the academic side? Maybe that I just didn't touch upon or anything maybe that I missed? I know because it, there's so much information we just gave you and I, and I realize it's our own book. We just want you to know the help is available and where to go and get it. That's the best information that we can give you. Okay, no other questions from that standpoint? Okay, well then next time you probably see me, I'll be pacing the sidelines, yelling at the officials. Oh, no, you didn't hear that. <laughs> Think about that, you know, even if you have any sort of an athletic scholarship. I mean, any amount of money in one of our internal scholarships can help pay for books. It can just help with some living expenses. One of the things that we do through the Student Success Center in our academic coaching is provide workshops every week um, during that activity period that we talked about, that down 45 minutes or so where students don't have classes. We run workshops weekly. And they start with the very basic things in the beginning of time management and note-taking skills. Um, test taking strategies. But one of the workshops that we will hold is a scholarship writing workshop. That's the hardest piece and that's why students very often don't take advantage of a scholarship because they don't even know where to begin. 
it's a very simple application, but then one part of the application process is filling out or writing a letter, writing an essay. And that's what usually trips people up. So the workshop will be held. One of our English faculty members will um, oversee the workshop where she will help all students start to write that essay and then review that for them to make sure that it is something that, that is worthy for them. So definitely keep that in mind when uh, we have things going on. One of the other things I just want to point out to you on the website, um, our residence life, I'm jumping on it, I'm sorry. Okay, if we get into residence life, there's a link to our academic calendar, which you are going to want to pay attention to because it does include the opening and closing dates for the dorm. So for this fall semester, you're going to want to take a look at that to see when we close for our Thanksgiving break, when the college will actually close and when we'll then reopen, just to be aware of that. The students get, will get that information through Res Life, but again, it will be there. If you don't find it, that's okay. We know it's there. He's getting it, right? Yeah. It's a handout, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the dates are right there through the spring semester, again, of when the, the dorm will close. The dorms will close for the, semester, the end of the semester and then reopen in January, and then again close at the end of the semester when students have to be out of the dorm so that we can then start to clean and do everything we do while students aren't here. Alright, so again, you're going to want to pay attention to those dates. Last thing before I have uh, President Will close it for us. Again, we talked about the different um, literature that was on that back table. The one thing there that you might want to pay attention to is the book information. We do not have a mortar bookstore. We use a virtual bookstore. So all of the textbooks have to be ordered online. The directions for doing that, there's a handout on that table also that gives you all the details of how to order your textbooks. And the students will also have that. So just in case you want to get that, uh, to also know what they're doing. Um, when the information is mailed, is there like a general mail center that the students go to or like we send something? How does, it, how does that work? I believe is it just comes into 501. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. You send it and you actually send it directly to the main building, 501 Vine yeah, Street. Vine it has Street. to, it cannot go to their dorm. It right. has to go through our mail room. Mm -hmm. It won't be delivered directly to them. And if it's something larger, usually what happens is the resident director will give it to the students, say, hey, you have a package up at the building, and it can, they can access it here. Just please, when, I believe it's in their handbook, the resident hall handbook, you can read how to mail the address is directly in there. If it's not up there now, you know, I'm not sure, but it would, they will receive it also. Right. They'll have a handbook that they can access all of that also. But it does, just so you know, it does come through this main address. Right. And we do have a mail room in the lower level of this building. So if you are sending something, you know, they, the students can check that also. Usually the resident directors pick it up and bring things to the board for students. But you know, if they are expecting something from you, they can check also. Hmm? As far as the book ordering, so how do they get those books? Are you delivering those books? Well, the books will be mailed. You can have them sent right to them here. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. The same way you have okay. Right. Right. Same way. Okay.
we've seen it all, just as you have, and so just help us to, as we go through this. I, you know, I, we've bombarded you with a lot of information. Hopefully, what you have come away with is a couple of things. One, we have a tremendous team of people here who really do care. They are really focused on helping your son to be successful, uh, not just on the football field. It's, it, you know, we always want a winning season, and the coach will tell you, you know, winning is everything, but academics is everything too, uh, as well as the rest of the, the, the life skills that they'll gain here through college. Uh, we really do care, and, and so whether it's in tutoring or it's in student services or it's the business office or financial aid, people will try and help. And so the other thing I want to leave you with is communication. That's very critical. We need to know, you know, if you see something, if you hear something that your son is struggling, or there's some issue or something they're communicating to you, they may very well be talking to Rick Barone. You know, Rick, Rick is kind of like the dad around here for them. And, and he will give them that hug when they need it. He'll give them that pat on the back when they need it. And he'll also give them that little love tap in the rear end when they need it. Um, and, and he will. He'll, he will track them down if they're not in class. He'll find them. But you'll sometimes hear those things too. And if you communicate that back to us, that will help us to reach out and, and keep things happening or from happening before it gets too late. So the more quickly you can get issues to us or the more quickly you can interdict uh, from your end, that will help us uh, as well. Because we know some, you know, there are 18, 19, 20 year old young men uh, many times away from home for the first time. And we all struggle. Sometimes we have issues that come up. Uh, and, or things happen at home. There may be a death in the family or, you know, a problem with a relationship or something. Let us know. Help us to, to help your son. Because uh, we will do that. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to leave you with. Is there anybody have any questions? Any other generic questions or things that we can help you with now? Not a thing. Good. Thank you all for coming in. We're looking forward to a great year. I hope to see you all at a bowl game uh, in that first week of December. Uh, and we'll see you then.